there, everyone. Happy Monday. Thank you for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time where we can relax and craft together for about an hour. And I work on a whole project from beginning to end, so you can be part of the whole process along the way. So thanks for joining me here on Facebook, and thanks for replay viewers who are watching on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. All right, you guys, we are continuing the Splendid Sampler 2 quilt along. Uh, so we are going to do some embroidery this week. So I brought my sewing machine in to the shop to try and get those feed dogs down. They are going to try heating it up to kind of release some oils and stuff. So we'll see if that works. He, he, had, he looked like he had a big question mark on top of his forehead. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, it might be a month or so before I get my sewing machine back. So we'll be doing some embroidery for a little while. Um, I'm gonna try and work through some of the projects in this book. I may have to bring out uh, a different sewing machine <laughs> uh, if we need to sew a few things. Uh, but I think tonight we're gonna start the Let's Go Sew uh, embroidered block. And uh, yeah, so we'll prep our fabric, we'll transfer the design. I'm just gonna trace the design for this and uh, uh, we'll get going. I know Gretchen, a month, it's crazy. But, you know, it's been a while. I mean, I could have kept sewing on it. We just cleaned and oiled it and everything, but it would be nice to get those feed dogs down before I start doing some more free motion quilting and stuff. So, eh, that's how long the queue was, he said. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you guys around. Let's get uh, going on this project. Okay, there's the sew. All right, I have already photocopied um, I photocopied the design from the fold-out sheets in the back and the reason that I didn't do it I'm not going to trace directly from the fold-out sheets is because those sheets were printed on both sides So if I put it on my light table, then I'll, I'll see the other side through so that doesn't make sense So I made a photocopy first too. you Oh, your sister told it would be a month for hers last year and it was three days. So you never know. Yeah, actually he started looking at it right away and I thought, oh dang, he's gonna fix it right here. But nope, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So first off, I'm just going to press a little corner of this white fabric. We need to trim this fabric down. I need a seven inch piece to start out with. So we'll just go like this. All right. So really, I wanted to show you guys, there's only two embroideries really that we can do in here without sewing. And it's this one, the sew one, and then, um, let's see a little further back. More have embroidery, but we have to do a lot of sewing work before we can do the embroidery. So like that one, for example. So this is the other one. We, um, this one, we can, we can stitch this whole center and then we'll just have to wait to put the border on. But like this one, you know, this one, I think we make the whole thing first before stitching. So that won't work. Oh yeah, and there's extra stitching on top. So it's funny, all these ones that do have embroidery in, you know, this one all kind of require a pile of sewing first. If we got real fancy, we could do this whole thing needle turn applique. So we could maybe work on work on that one. Finish the kitty. I think that's really kind of it for embroidery. So that's that's the situation we're in. A lot. I thought there was a lot more just straight embroidery than there is, and I don't think there was any more. I mean, this has a little bit. So that's some. We could do some more needle turn in theory. And this guy we have done. This one we need to sew a lot first before doing embroidery. So that one's out. So that was a little surprising when I was going through all this. They all have a lot of sewing first. But I don't know, we might be able to do some applique type stuff. 
I do. I have a I I have a couple other machines. They're just hooked into other things, so it does. They're not so easily moved uh, to the table here, Patty. So I don't know. That's that's the thing I got to decide. Am I going to try and undo one of my machines because they're screwed into uh, cabinets? All right. Let's start off by cutting this to the seven inches. You know, we need to end up with it at six and a half inches, but by cutting it to the seven inches, that's just going to help us. Uh, ooh, the edge is going to like pull in and get roughed up from all our handling of it. So it's going to be helpful making it a little bit bigger than we can trim it down. And I'm not going to get too precious with this. Like this, this edge isn't perfectly straight, but again, we don't need it to be perfectly straight because it's going to get kind of roughed, roughed up a little bit as we stitch. So I'm going to just do seven inches, you know, as best I can. I always have to count. <laughs> All right. Rotary cutter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I don't have my rulers are kind of all over the place, so I'm just gonna do it with this guy. Um, my glove is somewhere too. I cleaned a little bit or a little bit here when I moved my sewing machine, but apparently not enough that I know where anything is yet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. This does the job. Like I said, all we need is a little, a little, um, a little edge on there. And we'll be, we'll be trimming it down later. Okay. So let's work on transferring this design. I thought maybe there's dirt on it, but it's just some fuzzles here. So I have a light table here just cause it's nighttime, <laughs> uh, but you can just tape, tape your design to a window and then just kind of tape your fabric to it afterwards. I can really just kind of see right through there. There's probably not really any need for the light table. Eh, it helps a little bit. We'll, we'll keep it on. Um, you know, normally I tape this whole thing down, but actually the fabric seems like it's kind of gripping onto the paper just fine. So I'm, I'm not even really going to bother. This isn't a whole super detailed design. So I'm going to just lay that on there like that. I'm going to trace it with my water soluble marking pen. That seems pretty easy for me. I actually sometimes like using just a pencil that works well too. All right, let's give this a go. Actually, you know what? Now I just got nervous. Let's tape it down. <laughs> so I got some painter's tape here. Let's, let's tape it down first. I'm actually gonna grab the fabric, the paper, and the light tape on this side. I think we can do that on the other side too. So this will kind of pull at the fabric a little bit on the edges when we take this tape off. But uh, again, we're, we're going to trim those down. All right, now let's do it. Oh, you love this black Sally? Yeah, it looks fun. It looks like it's going to be a nice, just sweet uh, embroidery. Okay, let's trace this guy. So the one thing I don't really like about these markers is that sometimes they spread quite a bit. I'm barely touching it and I'm trying to go fast because I think the more it touches the fabric, the more it wants to spread a little bit. But I think, you know, these are pretty big, big design shapes. So I don't think I'm going to like miss any detail by by the big fabric. If I'm really trying to get a little bit more detailed, I will maybe use a just a just a pencil. Nice sharp pencil. So 
So I'll probably also keep kind of like rotating this a little bit to make it easier for me to trace. So see if I turn it off, then you can, you guys can see a little bit better. You know, maybe I'll just leave that off. Then you guys can see where I went. I, I really can just see right through this. The lines are big enough. And with the white fabric, it makes it just easy. I might turn it back on just to make sure that I got all these like little dots and stuff. But in general, I don't think this is any problem doing it like this. So we'll trace it today, we'll pick some colors, and uh, hopefully we can stitch a little bit. Um, you know, I do have a friction pen, and I know those are really great. Um, I suppose I can show you guys that one of these days. But I'm, I don't know, I'm paranoid about them, because they do... I don't know if you guys have used them before, but especially on light colors like this, I find that it's a, okay, so what a friction pen is, is it's a pen, just like a normal pen, but the beauty of it is that in theory, the idea is like when you write on paper, you can actually erase it. And how it works is it's the actual uh, friction of that rubbing that gets gets rid of rid of it. It's like some chemical reaction sort of thing. It doesn't actually get rid of it. It just kind of heats it up and it, and it goes away. So the beauty, it's been taken on by the quilting industry because you just blast some heat on it and it goes away. So it draws on really well because it just draws on like a ballpoint pen. And so you can get really great lines. Uh, and that is like the beauty right away was like, oh, this is amazing. It's so, it draws so well. And then it just goes away when you put the iron over it. But I used it a lot. I actually used it a lot uh, when I made the Sew and Stitch Embroidery book. And one thing I noticed, it had they had just come out around then. And... Uh, I was like, oh, this is great because I can just doodle and sketch right on my fabric and only stitch where I want. And then I can just heat away all my extra lines from, from sketching. And it didn't really work like that. You could actually see the ink still. You couldn't see the colors, but you could tell if you looked really close at the fabric, all of the holes in, in between the threads, you know, like you have threads going this way and this way, all the little holes were filled in with ink still. So you got like this ghosting, you got this, um, you know, it was still there. And especially in a light color fabric like that, you could see it. You could see, you could see the gunk that was still in between the the fabric. So that was a little weird. And if it gets cool at all, all those lines come back. So, I, so I, I don't know. It draws on fabulously. I think it's probably be, it'd be great for like, if you had to draw lines on a half square triangles that you were going to cut um, right on the lines like that. But for embroidery, the transfer process is a, is so easy and it goes on well, but uh, it, to me, I just, I don't know. I think it's just a little risky. So I, I don't like using it. Um, you've been using a mechanical pencil. I, I kind of like um, a mechanical pencil too, just because you can get it real, it's really sharp and it, you know, it, it'd be like a, a third as thick as what these lines are. Um, so I do like that as well. Um, the only time I don't, especially like using a mechanical pencil if, is if I know I'm going to use, if it's on like a really light fabric and I plan on using a light thread or something, then I just get nervous that I, that I'll see the pencil or that I'll like, it'll like bleed or bleed a little bit, not bleed. What is smear? It'll smear a little bit. Um, so my favorite way is still using the, uh, sulky stick and stitch embroidery stabilizer. So that's um, where you can print out the design directly to it. Um, 
directly to the embroidery stabler stabilizer and then you can just uh stitch right through it and it washes away i don't know if you guys saw that photo that i took this weekend of that that B embroidery that I was working on, if you if you looked close at that, you could see that there was a fabric kind of on, on that I was stitching through. That was the Fabri-Solvi. Oh, and you could tell it was printed right on there. So I love that the best because you can skip all of this tracing. This is really cute. <laughs> um, but you can skip all the tracing all together. Like you can just print it out and start stitching. And the bonus is that the lines are perfect, right? Because it's a direct print from the pattern. So it's not one level of degradation from being traced. So you, Barbara, use the wash away stabilizer. Yeah, so that's that's what this is, the, the sticky, it's the stick and stitch. It used to be called sticky Fabri-Solvi. I gotta turn the light on for this. I'm not quite sure what's happening here. Oh, okay, so it's like two, are these supposed to be connected? Let's look at, I'm just trying to figure this out. Oh, it does look like two separate little branches and then like a little arched branch. Oh, actually it looks like this arched branch kind of finishes this circle and then there's just some added detail to it. Okay, I understand it. Trying to, trying to get what's going on here. All right. I'm gonna rotate again here a little bit just so I'm not at an awkward position. There we go. But yeah, so when I feel like tracing is fine, then I usually just end up with this water soluble marker. Oh, use the Crayola washable markers. Oh, interesting. You know what? I think my mom just got some of those for that purpose too. I was gonna do that. I should put that on my list. I think she said that she read an article about it and they mentioned not to use orange or something. I don't know. For some reason that's sticking out in my memory a little bit like the orange doesn't wash it away. I feel like, I feel like with anything you should probably do a little test, but yeah. I wonder if the, I wonder if those um, markers, the, uh, all right, I'm gonna leave this on for this bottom part. This is kind of hard to tell. Uh, I wonder if those Crayola markers um, bleed as much as this does. Cause I feel like this just keeps expanding into the, in the fabric. Like my lines are really thick, not super precise. But again, for this design, it doesn't matter all, all that much. This is a pretty simple design. Okay. Almost done here. This didn't take too long. So this is an old light table back when there were a bajillion dollars, but now you can get a light table this thin and like huge for like $20. So, and you know, without a cord too, in theory, uh, on some of them. So they've come a long way. So if this ever gets kaputskis, this, uh, this one, I'll be getting a new one right away probably. All right. Yeah, I think this is a fine line. Yeah, it is. So this is the fine line Mark Be Gone uh, one here. And you know, it's it's okay. Actually, that's kind of how I feel about all of these. It does the job it needs to, but again, I like the using this embroidery stabilizer where I can print right onto, their, onto it best. All right, so I'm gonna carefully pull this off because it's gonna wanna fray my edges. All right, didn't do it too bad. Yeah, that was easy. But you know, those uh, that embroidery stabilizer ends up being like a buck or two or something per use, really, right? So sometimes you just don't want to spend that money on on the easiness of it either. <laughs> so in that case, then you just find a way to trace it. Okay. There we go. So let's um, choose some colors. You know what? I think I'm going to get rid of this this guy here because then uh, um, my fabric won't look so green uh, with it laying, you know, because you can kind of see through this a little bit. All right. Let's choose some colors. And this looks very simple. So it only looks like it has three colors. You know what? I haven't read any instructions. Maybe we should do that. Oh, see, no, I'm not doing any of the lightweight interface either. You know, I really should do that sometime though. 
You know what, I think that's gotta go on my list too. I don't actually have any lightweight uh, fusible interface, but a lot of times with embroidery, people, you know, I'm not sure I've ever done this actually, they'll fuse a lightweight uh, interfacing on the back because then it'll help just give it a little bit more heft. Um, and I think you won't see the stitches in the back as, as easily, but I don't know. I haven't given it a try, so I'll have to do that sometime. Although I can, you know, still see the red be behind here, so I don't, I don't know. Seems like an extra step to me, but I will, um, I'll have to test that sometime. Just see, see how I feel about it, you know? All right. Uh, 12 weight cotton embroidery thread. Oh, or embroidery floss. We're going to do embroidery floss. So they are using green, red, and navy. So three colors. We're going to do them in some form of um you know our yellows that we've been doing and i'm gonna try using i got my little uh craft happy life bin uh this is a, a sarah lawson pattern from so sweetness um it's where i throw all my excess embroidery thread it used to be all over the place but you know what i threw it all in here once and it, it's just so easy to dig and find what i mean i mean you know it is a crazy mess but that's okay. <laughs> that's what, that's what it ends up being. All right. So we need three colors. So we kind of have the sew on the inside is a color and then uh, the leaves are all a color and then these flowers and dots are a color. So I'm going to just right away kind of grab some of my yellow, light yellow, orangey sort of colors. Oh, wow. This is a mess, but I think I got a lot of that color. So we'll grab it from somewhere else just to kind of see what pops up. Oh, you know, so this is that color that 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 cone color was. That might be fun to use. Gosh, I kind of want to just do this, the, use the greens and everything. So like these would be cute, but gosh, I really should maybe try and use all the tan colors from the quilt. Like we could, sometimes those like mono, color things look pretty cute. Like maybe, maybe like having this brown in here, that would be kind of something interesting. Let's, let's go, let's see what it looks like muted and then, then we'll work our way outward. How about that? Ugh, it'd be fun to use some bright yellow maybe. I'm not sold on, on just all yellow yet, but it's, it's a starting point. All right, I just pulled this out and it, this gray and tan, or this gray and orangey color, that's kind of pretty. Those kind of are our colors. Eh, I don't think it shows up very well. Oh yeah, our, my, my um, sewing machine is in the shop. So uh, I won't be using that. It might be like a whole month even um, till I can use it. So <laughs> that's kind of a bummer, but if it comes back and my feed dogs are, are going up and down, then that will be lovely. All right. I don't know. I guess I don't really have so many muted colors of embroidery floss. Apparently I, I stitch very brightly because <laughs> um, my embroidery floss colors aren't, aren't as bright or I mean my, um, my uh, embroidery frost colors are much brighter than, than the quilt colors. I'm going to pull some of this out. I don't know. I don't know how I'm feeling about this. So we could do this orange for the flowers. That kind of goes with the red. Then we could do these for the leaves is kind of what I was thinking. Then we just kind of have like this orangey wreath happening, which is kind of sweet maybe. And uh, I don't know, we could do the brown. I'm not sold on the brown. I think that's what's getting me. I don't like the brown. We actually have a darker brown, but I think that would be worse. Oh, this is me attempting to not do a pop of color in this one compared, you know, because it's not my, I'm, I'm only doing like a bright color every five blocks. I think maybe I should go back to this green. Do that, the sew. So. Should I just do it like that? 
Oh, this is a bright pop. I could do that slightly more pale. We could do the green for the middle. That might be a little bit different. I don't know. That's kind of interesting. I know. Well, see, the, the thing with the other machine is that, ooh, yeah, I could do those. The, my other machines are in cabinets, so I would have to unscrew them from the cabinets and um, get them out here again, and I don't know if I want to do all that. You know, I think this is kind of sweet. Um, oh, the variegated? It's, it's not variegated. It's just two colors wound together. But I wonder, yeah, I don't have any variegated. You know, I'm, I'm set on using stuff that I'm for my scraps. So I could, I could go to my real embroidery floss and, and um, do some variegated and stuff. But you know what? I don't know. There's something kind of fun about this. I kind of like the idea that the border feels like monotone almost. I mean, it's not, it's, it's, um, you know, these two colors, but I kind of like that it's that warm orange. And then we got the little green on the inside versus, you know, what you'd kind of expect, which would be the green here. And then something else. I kind of like the whole border being, being like that. So, okay. At some point we just got to decide, right? So I think, I think we'll do the light orange flowers and make the leaves this orange. So this is that coral orange that was our mascot color. And you know what? I do actually have another cone of this. So maybe tomorrow I'll bring out our, the cone, which used to be our mascot. Um, so let's do that. All right, so I think we're fine. We're gonna go with these. We'll see. We'll see what happens. At some point, you just gotta see, right? All right, I'm grabbing my embroidery hoop. Oh, this is much smaller hoop, so I'm gonna have to use. Let's see. Will this fit in my six-inch hoop? You know what? I should not have cut this down yet, should I? This would have been probably better if I cut it, left it like a ten-inch square. Then I could use my embroidery hoop a lot easier. This one's too big to. Oh, I might have to go all the way down to a four inch one. That'd be kind of a bummer. Eh, I think I might have to. Wonder if I can force it into this one. We're gonna try that. When I can, I like being able to fit the whole design in, in the hoop, just cause then you don't have to move it around so much. But I guess I just wasn't thinking. Um, normally I would have left a whole lot more around the edge because you do want it to capture every, every edge, the hoop. So this, what I'm doing now, I would not recommend and I don't usually do this, but I don't know, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. This might just, I might stop this before I get too far. Let's see what happens if I pull on just the edges. This might just be a disaster. See what I'm saying? Um, the fabric's too small, so normally I would get these edges and I'd be able to pull on those edges as well. Eh, I don't like it. I think we're gonna get a smaller hoop. I probably have an in-between hoop. This is a six inch hoop. Uh, and then I have my eight inch, but um, and then I have a four inch. Those are the only ones I have sitting here. So I suppose we'll just do it. All right, you know what? I think I'm gonna start with some leaves. And that's the other thing. If I left if I left some fabric around the edge, I could like center this design a little bit more and now I can't so much. So that was kind of a mistake. But it's really up to you. Yeah, Gina says that she prefers three to four inch hoops. And you know, these travel uh, a whole lot nicer, so. That's a huge benefit. You can just stick this in your bag to go. And you know what? The actual other nice thing about a smaller hoop is that it's a good reminder to not have your design in your hoop forever. Um, th that will crease your fabric quite a bit if you just leave it in your hoop all the time. So by forcing you to move it around, um, then you're gonna take it out of the hoop often, which is good. Yeah, that painter's tape, I don't think that would hold this at all. Um, I'm not, okay, so painter's tape, some people put tape around it so it doesn't fray. I'm not worried about the fraying because 
we're cutting this down to six and a half inches yet. So I got it an extra uh, quarter inch on all these sides. So I'm not, I'm not worried about it fraying so much. Okay, let's grab a needle, which I just, oh, here we go. So I have my embroidery needle here. Oh, the small hoops feel better in your hands. You know, that's, that's a very good point for sure. Um, all right, I got an embroidery needle. It's got a sharp point and it's got a large eye so we can put floss through it easily. Um, there is a difference between a, uh, an embroidery needle and a cross stitch needle. A lot of people try and start embroidery after doing cross stitch. Um, they're not the same needle. So a cross stitch needle has a blunted tip because in cross stitch, you have that fabric with the little holes. So you want to go through those holes. You don't actually want to pierce the fabric. Whereas with um, embroidery, you do want to pierce through the fabric. So you do need that sharp edge. You can use a, a cross stitch needle with the blunted edge, but it, you know, it'll be hard to stab it, stab your fabric and get in there. Okay, let's, uh, these were that coral color. Let's find an end here. Oh, uh, I would, I don't think the painter's tape, Noeline would work for that. It, it's barely holds anything that painter's tape. All right, I'm going to cut this. Let's just check the instructions. I'm curious how many strands of floss she uses in the instructions. Embroider the design using one strand of 12 weight thread. We're not doing that or two strands of embroidery floss. Okay, so these are done with two strands. Um, use a stem stitch for the solid lines and French knots through for the dots. Oh man, you know, I hardly ever use stem stitch. I'm curious, I'm gonna see what it looks like. Yeah, that's stem stitch. All right, well, this will be a test of our stem stitch, I suppose. <laughs> uh, oops, I need um, just two strands from here. Although these will actually appear thicker because a stem stitch you get um, kind of a double thickness worth of stitch. So it'll actually look like four strands of floss next to each other instead of just the two. Oh yeah, I just need the two. I said four in my head and I was about to get four strands. So, all right, I'm gonna put these two strands back together. I cut about, yeah, just shy of 24 inches here. All right, for a stem stitch, you can actually have your fabric a little looser in the hoop because for stem stitch, it's easiest to go in and out of the fabric in the same motion and not having the fabric so tight. Uh, see, now it's a little looser. That That is actually a little helpful. I still want it in there pretty good there. All right, I'm going to start with an away knot. Uh, this is a thing I like doing when I begin an embroidery, when I don't have anything else, anywhere else to weave in my ends, but I don't like tying just a knot and having a knot on the back of my embroidery. I do like weaving in my ends. Uh, then I don't have anything, um, I know nothing will catch on those knots, and I think it's actually a little bit more secure. So at the beginning, you kind of don't have anything to weave in, so I, I put a temporary knot in, with a long kind of strand that I'll weave in later. So I'm gonna start, let's see, should we do the leaves first? Hmm. Sometimes I like doing the stems last because it covers up the beginning stitches of, of um, whatever, like the leaves. So maybe we'll start the leaves first. Like do a leaf and keep jumping up and doing leaves and then come back down and do our stem because it'll cover up the, the starting parts of our leaves. I think that'd probably be the prettiest way of doing it. So, okay, let's do that. Oh, you didn't use a hoop for this block and it was fine. Yeah, actually, you know what? I think that might be one of the reasons that stem stitch is mentioned a lot in, in this embroidery book or in this in the Splendid Sampler 2 is because you can do the stem stitch easily without a, without a hoop. So I kind of suspect that might be a reason all right, so I'm gonna go as far away as I can from my starting point. So I'm gonna start, I think I'm gonna start this 
leaf here. I'm going to do the leaves first. So I'm going from front to back. And this is just going to give us a little bit of thread to work with later. Okay, I got to kind of remember how to do this now. Like I said, don't do stem stitch very often. But I think I have to start back one. I might have totally just forgot how to do stem stitch right now, actually. <laughs> no, I think we got it. All right, so I'm going to start at that point, and then I'm going to go around here. Oh my gosh, you guys, I think I might have just forgot to how to do stem stitch. I really am going to have to look in the back right now. Let's do it. <laughs> you guys, I've been embroidering all weekend, and my brain is totally fried on embroidery. And now, since I don't hardly do uh, stem stitch... I gotta look it up. Okay, that's where I'm going wrong. I gotta start. I don't start at this, uh, the beginning spot. It is kind of like a back stitch. Oh, I can start on this side. I'll just go around here. Okay, <laughs> that looks better. You know. I was thinking the other way around, but now, now I got it in my head. So <laughs> it's coming back to me now. So I, I'm starting on the left and going this way. Whew. All right. So I'm going at like two stitches away and I'm going to come back up kind of in the middle, like where one stitch would have been. And what I want the whole time is my thread to be arcing underneath. All right. I'm feeling it now. <laughs> it's all coming back. So it's kind of like a back stitch, but it's a back stitch where we're going in and out at the same time with all the excess down here. So there we go. You can kind of see the little loop coming back underneath there. And now we want to keep doing that. So we always want this loop underneath. So I'm going to go like the two stitches, two stitches worth away again. And then I'm going to come up like right next to that hole right in the middle. See, so cutting it in half again. And now with this going underneath, there. So you can kind of see, we kind of have these slanted, slanted stitches next to each other. So getting it out of the way. The trick to a stem stitch though, is going in and out at the same time. Uh, it's, it's more difficult if you do this, this, it's called the sewing method when you go in and out. It's a little more difficult when you try and stab. This is the stabbing method, stab and then, you know, pull away through and then come back up. Like that's difficult because look, you got to kind of grab it and hook it underneath. It's hard to get it just right. It, it really is meant, uh, for this sewing method where you go in and out right away. That actually, when I discovered that for the stem stitch, uh, it totally changed my perspective on stem stitch. You know what? If I, if I would have known this, like, when I was doing a lot of embroidery of other embroideries, I, I probably would have incorporated stem stitch a lot more in, in my designs and stuff. But it really only works well with that sewing method which is where you go in and out at this in the same motion. So I don't know, I'm always a little scared of it. And <laughs> obviously I blank on it too, apparently. Maybe that's anxiety. Maybe that's like part of the fear of the stem stitch is it's gonna come back and um, my, and my anxiety towards it is coming across with uh, um, <laughs> not remembering how to do it. So I can end this in two ways. I can just, I can just end right now with this big long stitch, but if I want, it to feel as thick as these other ones, I can come back up and then do one more half stitch, but I think I'm going to just end it like this. There we go. So there's our first little stem stitch uh, feller there. I think that's looking pretty cute. It's got some texture. I like it. So all right, I'm going to start this next one. All right, again, I want this kind of down. I always like 
like my thumb down there to hold it in place. All right, in and out in the middle. The trick is always having that arch underneath. And actually, I always have the arch kind of follow what arch I'm, I'm working on. So since, since this is arcing underneath, I'm gonna, like it's arcing this way, I'm gonna make my thread arc that way. If this was like a, an S curve, like it's squiggled, I might do it arced underneath this way, but I might switch to an above uh, stem stitch on the arced over part. If we get to a, a section like that, like this S for example, we might have to do that there. But for these, these guys, you know, as we turn, they just keep arcing under. In and out. You know, I'm going right next to the hole. I think really you could go in the same hole, that'd be fine, but I go just right next to it. And when I go around these curves, I, I tend to stitch a little bit smaller. Yeah, the, the back stitch is my go-to stitch. So whenever outlines are something else, I gotta think about it a little bit. This is a good way to make your stitches look a little fatter because you know we are laying stitches next to each other. So like I said, this, this two um, ply thread right now, this two strand thread kind of appears to be four strands because we're, we're putting them next to each other. Personally, I like, you know, it depends what, what, what look you're going for, obviously. I, if I need like a really thick line, sometimes I'll do a chain stitch, which I think is really cute. I don't know how, I think this probably looks better than a chain stitch for, for these leaves. If this appeared in front of me and I was gonna just stitch it how I normally stitch, it would probably end up being a back stitch. So this is a little a little fancier uh, to me for than that. So makes it exciting. I think this does use up quite a bit of thread. All right, there's our second one. I you know the one reason I don't always do this is because it's sometimes I just feel like it looks like loose a little bit, and uh, I don't know back stitch is so tidy and clean and so is like chain stitch and stuff. So I think I kind of like, like the cleanliness of, of them, but this is awfully pretty. You know, it, this does look a little bit more organic. That's how I feel about the um, split stitch as well. I think that looks really kind of organic and um, just like with a back stitch, you have all those perfect little Stitches that you can see all the stitches stand out right next to each other With us with a split stitch it all just blends together into one one line, which is kind of cool, but I don't know. I always go for the back stitch. I just think seeing those stitches it just screams embroidery to me So I like it Really, it's whatever look you want want to go for Oh, watching in Manchester. Fun. So I hope everyone had a nice weekend. Forget it's already, it's Monday again here. Like I said, I was embroidering all weekend. I'm working on some new designs uh, for us here. I think this is all I can get out of this thread, just this one more here. This is the last one and I'll have to get new thread already. Yeah, it, this uses a ton of thread. I would have not used this much for a back stitch, I don't think. But yeah, so I'll be stitching some more this week for some designs and I'll be starting to pitch them um, new designs to stores and uh, we'll get them here as well. Oh, I don't really trust that this is gonna get us far, but you know what, why don't we just try? I'm not quite sure the thread that I have on my needle will get all the way around, but we're gonna give it a go. Oh, cool, Patty. 
I'm I'm hoping they'll be out sooner than later. Right now I'm just making um, mock-ups. Right now I'm just doing I'm doing the initial stitching. So I've never stitched any of them before. They were just drawings, and now I'm I'm testing them basically, seeing what they look like as embroideries and adjusting along the way. Oh, you love the be kind one. Yeah, so that's that's a good example of one that I adjusted once I started stitching, like after I had the drawing. So I did the body of the bee in yellow, and I was thinking, ah, is yellow just not gonna be bright enough to jump off the background and it's the main body of the bee, I don't want it to get lost. So what I did is I made it, it a chain stitch, which makes it like a super fat stitch. And I think that just helped a ton. It made, it made first of the, of all the, the body of the bee more interesting and because uh, it's a different fun stitch and it just made the outline really fat too um, to make it stand out so I think that kind of solved my my problem of will it disappear because it's a light color so things like that is are the things that I learn while while testing it and so what I do here my um, embroideries that I'm doing now like the bee those will end up being the covers of of the uh, the kits and the patterns and stuff. So I'm gonna I have to finish them up and then I'll shoot photos of them and uh, then we'll start um, designing all the packaging and stuff. All right, I totally had enough for this one, so that makes me happy. All right, I'm gonna weave in the ends on this. So see, like this is what a back stitch would kind of look like, and I think that's awfully sweet. Still, I like a back stitch. All right, I'm gonna weave in this end to the backs of these stitches instead of tying a knot, and I do it three times. So back and forth. There's two times, and the third time kind of locks everything in place. Like you can't really pull it out after you do this third one. And I try and catch as many threads as possible because I'm kind of basically tying a big long knot. So there we go. And now I can trim it right on the edge near the fabric. There, so there's no knot for my stitches to catch on while I'm stitching uh, or my thread to catch on. Um, like this isn't gonna come out in the wash or anything either. And it's just like a nice, pretty smooth surface. So, uh, and no flared ends that will kind of poke through the front. I hate that. Uh, that's annoying um, when you pull those itty bitty thread ends to the front. So this takes care of that problem. Uh, now we have this guy up here. I'm gonna just snip that knot off that we made. There we go, there's a little knot. And there, now we have this little piece of thread. I'm gonna weave that in as well. Because we're using this small hoop, it's not very long, but we'll see what we can do. All right, I'm gonna weave in. Weaving in ends is a little more difficult on these small hoops too, because you get so close to the hoop and then it's hard to bring the needle through, but all right. I think this is working just fine. Grab a few more threads here. All right. Then I can snip that close to the edge too. And I think we will call it there for the night. I'm gonna take this out. Uh, Cause like I said, I, I do like um, taking the hoop out. See, you can start to see the crease here. By taking it out, that should relax a little bit. And we'll we'll press all this too. So, all right, there is our stem stitch. See, it's just more organic. It's got more going on with it. I'm just trying to push it all up along the edge. I think it's prettier then. There we go. There, we prettied it up a little bit. I almost think you should spray start it or something where and then get it all like in place where we like it before pressing but I think it'll be fine it's just that's the style of the stitch but it's pretty cute 
So, all right, I'm, I'm happy with that. So let's just kind of pop our other colors on here again. We're gonna do that with this, with the, for the sew, and this will be the flower. And this will be the color of the little dots as well. I think that's pretty. It'll be like this pretty orange wreath. And um, then that green in the middle, I think it'll be kind of neat, kind of different. Almost like a one color thing, but not quite. We'll see how it goes. All right, you guys, I'm gonna flip you around and we will call it there this evening. All right, hello. So I think that was actually a really good start because we, I mean, we cut the fabric and we outlined it and everything to, or transferred it. So, um, you know, tomorrow we'll get a whole pile of embroidery done. I think for sure we'll probably at least, if we continue with the orange, I like to go by color a lot of times. So if we do all the orange first, then, uh, then, um, you know, I think we can probably do all that tomorrow. All right. Thanks for helping me out with the stem stitch. <laughs> That one just leaves my brain every once in a while. But all right, so we'll continue on this tomorrow. Uh, I'm probably only going to be here uh, Tuesday and Wednesday this week. We have family coming in, uh, some of John's family coming in on Thursday. So uh, I probably won't be here Thursday or Friday. Uh, we'll see. So it's just an embroidery uh, early week this week. <laughs> but I think we could probably get very far or almost finished in the next, uh, well, two more hours working on it. We could probably at least get the border done. Oh yes, and I'll bring the big cone out tomorrow as well. <laughs> we'll pull all our new floss from there. <laughs> awesome, you guys. So thank you again for joining me. I'll uh, get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. And uh, then I will be back here tomorrow on the Penguin and Fish Facebook page at 8.30 p.m. Central. So thank you again. I uh, love hearing from you guys every night. See you later. Good night.